from the neighborhood quarter guy here, and uh, after a bunch of stuff, well, speculation and all that, we finally have some concrete info on Pokemon Sun and Moon. You know, besides the whole Chinese thing. First off, they've revealed the three starters, and <laughs> they all look really cute. First off, we have the grass starter, which is uh, actually a grass flying type named Rowlet. It's basically an adorable, plushy little grass owl. And seriously, within 24 hours, someone had already posted pictures of a plushie they had made of Rowlet. I mean, it's that adorable. And it's actually a grass flying type, which means rip against ice types, but why would you use a grass flying type against ice types anyway, unless you had no other choice? <laughs> also, anyways, uh, it's the... It, as far as I can remember, it's the first time that the grass starter has had a dual typing, well, in its first stage, since the first generation, Bulbasaur, Grass Poison. I also like how Rowlet can just turn its head around and look at its trainer. Oh yeah, that's another, it's another little touch they're adding to Gen 7. You'll actually be able to see your trainer during the battle. And see your Pokemon, like, interact with it, like, looking back toward it for support. Or, some, or stuff like that. That might actually be pretty neat touch to the battle. Won't affect the game plan anyway, I don't think, but... Nice graphical touch. It's kind of like the benches from Gen 6. Anyways. Moving on to the fire starter. Oh man, they're not even trying with names for this one. They're calling it Litten. Basically, it's a Pokemon that... Can, that has a special oil in its coat. And can ignite the hairballs it coughs up. Ew. But also, when I looked at its design, I immediately started to think of nicknames for it, and I wasn't alone. If it's male, I'm naming it Senkets. If it's female, I'm naming it Ryuko. Yes, I've watched Kill a Kill. Don't judge me. <laughs> yeah, Lin, look, Lin kinda looks like when you're trying to be cute but you're edgy AF. <laughs> People have already compared it to Ryuko from Kill a Kill and Shadow, the Hedgehog. <laughs> and then we have the Water Starter, Poplio, Circus Seal, one of Yuya Sakaki's monsters if it became a Pokemon. Yeah, it can even create water bubbles on its nose that can bounce around like beach balls. <laughs> it's also adorable. I honestly don't know which one I'm going to pick at this point. Also, in terms of Sun and Moon, we've gotten our first look at the legendaries. And for Sun, we basically have a lion whose mane kind of looks to me like Drayden's beard. Yeah, if you play Gen 5, you, you notice that Drayden has that distinctive beard of his that pretty much covers his entire jaw and kind of makes it look like the underbite of a dragon. And... I don't know, uh, the Sun Legendary's mane kind of reminds me of that. And then... The Moon Legendary. It's basically like a lunar bat, but if you look at its wingspan... I, gu I guess Olympia was tired of being forgotten, so she became a, became a legendary Pokémon, so no one would ever forget her again. <laughs> Seriously, those wings... Don't tell me they don't remind you of Olympia's cape. Because... That's basically what they look like. <laughs> and we have a release date. I forgot exactly what it was offhand, but it's in November, so... If you're looking to get the game, mark your calendars. Anyways, I've entered the, the editing stages for my Q review of Mega Man X Command Mission, so expect that soon. Anyways, for my question of the week, I'd like to ask, which starter are you choosing if you're getting the game? As always, leave your answers in the comments below. I'll pick my favorites and feature them on the next episode. Here are last week's winners.
And with that, time for the fourth wall mailbag. As always, if you want to send me questions on your web browser, go to my channel, click the About tab, scroll down and click the Send Message button, and send me your questions that way. I'll pick the ones I think I can answer the best and feature them on the next episode. First question this week comes from ShadowLinkBDS, who asks, Have you ever played the fan game Mega Man Unlimited? Yes, I have! Really well-made game, I, I must say. It's like, the gameplay is tight, the Robot Masters are pretty cool, for the most part, anyway. Weapons are pretty good. Music's great. Kind of like what... The music's great, kind of like what you'd expect from Capcom and not from a fan game. But, let me tell ya, it is pretty damn challenging, especially on Mega Man standards. I mean, wow, some of those levels can get absolutely hectic. I mean, for Rainbow Man stage, you really have to be on your toes, otherwise you're dead. Next question comes from the Fa 54 who asks, If you get a PS4, what games are you most interested in playing? Well, there are a few that I'm interested in playing, like No Man's Sky, uh for its massive world and exploration. Well, massive galaxy, anyway. I think they were... I, I could only imagine, imagine that they were exaggerating when the planet count got into the quintillions, because I can honestly not see any way that they're all going to be discovered with within anyone's lifetime. I just don't see it happening, ever. I'm also interested in playing the King of Fighters 14 because, you know, King of Fighters and all that. Final Fantasy 15 because that was on my hype list. Uh, Kingdom Hearts 3, because I really want to see some closure to this story, and I know it, it's been ridiculously complicated, but I just want to see some closure to it. And, uh... Once Street Fighter 5 is, like, finally, you know, complete. I actually want to play it. Yeah, yeah, I'm not gonna deny. Capcom really botched the launch of 5. Yeah, next time, they should have a complete game ready for launch. Next question comes from Gemini Dragon, who asks, Have you considered playing Mega Man the Power Battle on a stream? The, I the idea actually came up when I saw that Max was going to be playing Mega Man The Power Battle. I actually have the Anniversary Collection on PS2, and uh, if if my TV and my streaming setup could support it, I might actually stream both Mega Man The Power Battle and Mega Man 2 The Power Fighters on a stream sometime. That might be fun. Too bad I can't, can't play online, though, for those games. Next question comes from Mario Sparta Bro, who asks, Would you like it if Undertale is included in the next Smash Brothers in some way? Not really. Because as much as I enjoyed Undertale, I really don't think it would fit in Smash Brothers in any way, shape, or form. I don't know. It's, I, I just don't think that, that it would work, to be honest. But then again, we fit Trainer a Duck Hunt Dog, but... I think... I don't know, I just can't really put my finger on it, but I just don't feel like it would... It would fit. I don't even know why. But, yeah. Last question this week comes from Matthew Stripmatter, who asks, Did you have any embarrassing nicknames growing up? Well, my mom used to call me Pumpkin. <laughs> 